Hello there, my fellow Wraith friends, and welcome back to some more lore on the Yeldar and their forces. Just like I promised in the previous Eldar video where we learned about the Wraith Guard and the Wraith Lord, today I'm gonna narrate to you about the third and most powerful of these types of walkers, the Wraith Knight. Now, I'm not exactly certain why a name like the Wraith Knight is given to something more powerful than the Wraith Lord, but who am I to question superior Eldar intellect? I'm your host, the Farseer GDN for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A Wraith Knight is another type of Ghost Warrior Combat Walker of the Eldar. Dominating the battlefield, a Wraith Knight looks upon the enemy like a vengeful god of war. They are armed with either massive directed energy cannons or a colossal powered ghost glaive and scatter shield for melee. And this giant ghost warrior can unleash blazing destruction or charge at the enemy and carve it apart. Inside its wraithbone hull, and quite unique compared to the other ghost warrior constructs, it actually has a living pilot, which communes with the soul of their twin, because this ghost warrior is driven by two Eldar, one living and one dead, working together. In many ways the Wraith Knight embodies the nature of reality for the Eldar themselves. The curving discs which embody a portion of death within life and a fragment of life within death. Their curving shells house the spirits of the wakeful dead in much the same manner like the other ghost warriors, although their chests also house a living Eldar pilot. These pilots are also not regular steersmen, such as those at the helm of an Eldar Graf tank or an aircraft, but they are rare and unusual warriors who are each born a twin. The psychic link between the rare pairs of Eldar identical twins is unlike any other. While they are alive, these gifted individuals can sense the mood, the thoughts or the proximity of their counterpart, with the ease that a regular Eldar can feel the sun on the skin or wind in his hair. The bond is so strong that should one of the twins die before the other, the surviving brother and sister will often fade away in sympathy. Sometimes when such a soul reaving process has taken place, the twin will sacrifice what is left of their life to pilot a wraith knight in the name of the craft world. The essence of the dead twin is transferred from the infinity circuit of the craft world and into the large spirit stone set in the chest of the giant ghost warrior while the surviving sibling enters a near permanent state of battle trance within the cavity behind the breastplate. The clarity of thought provided by the living twin ensures that the construct moves with the speed typical of all Eldar, while the psychic link between the pilot and their departed sibling allows them to commune with not only the animating force of the twin, but also with the spirits of former incumbents of the Wraith Knight which once controlled the mighty construct. The great measure of control afforded by this Gestalt mind gives the pilot mastery over the construct's psychically powered weapon systems and also affords the massive war machine an acrobatic grace, which belies its gigantic size. It is well that each Wraith Knight is capable of such feats of heroism, because they are at the forefront of the Eldar quest for brand new spirit stones. By passing through forbidden portals and traversing the shattered dimensional spars of the webway, the Wraith Knight can emerge onto the surface of a crone world, where the nature of reality shears with that of the warp. It is the metaphysical friction of this unnatural union between the energies of the materium and real space which causes reality itself to bleed, and then each drop of unleashed psychic power from the warp crystallizes into a new waystone ripe to house another Eldar soul and thus become a spirit stone. Only a Wraith Knight can endure the warp touch environments and demonic infestations plaguing these lost planets, and still return with their bounty intact. The mortals that embark upon such perilous missions risk not only their life, but also their immortal soul. Only the Wraith Knights have the power and resilience required to harvest a clutch of spirit stones and still escape from the nightmarish denizens of these worlds. As the end of days approaches and instances of birth become more eclipsed by reports of death, fewer and fewer pairs of Eldar twins are born upon the craft worlds. A great many Wraith Knight pilots are recruited from Revenant Scout Titan Helmsman, who have lost their Eldar twins in battle, 
and driven to regain their kinship whatever the cost, they give themselves to the twilight life of a Wraith Knight pilot. As unsettling as it may be, it is whispered that some Craftworld councils are removing the choice from such individuals. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and should a pair of twins be too attached to the light of the living world, it is possible to steer them towards a darker path. Even though they are many times bigger than even the mighty Wraith Lords, the Wraith Knights are still dexterous enough to run through the ruins of a shattered city, leaping from pillar to spar as their arcane weapons bring oblivion to the enemies of the Eldar. Each Wraith Knight carries either a pair of heavy Wraith Cannons, their lengthy forms capable of sending their targets straight into the Hell Dimension of the Warp, a Sun Cannon, mighty enough to obliterate an entire platoon of soldiers in a single blast, or a great Ghost Glaive and Scatter Shield, to engage even mighty demon princes in melee. An even rarer form of Ghost Warrior than the Wraith Knight is the Skatak Wraith Knight, which were designed to walk the endless paths of the Eldar Ethereal Realm in the webway and to purge them of any who would dare trespass. This macabre breed of Wraith Knight are piloted by Eldar who were particularly torn by the separation from their twins. Almost perpetually grief-stricken, the pilot and the Skatak Wraith Knight dwell in the webway, communing with the Wraithbone Infinity Circuit of their own construct. Usually, the Skatak Wraith Knights protect the webway from intrusion and emerge into real space only to aid Eldar forces on the brink of defeat, or to defend threatened webway portals. They are equipped with an even more complex webway shunt generator and even more specialist weapons. They are few in number, but devastating in battle. The Skatak are often armed with a pair of Death Shroud Cannons or Inferno Lances. These are similar to the weapons of the Death Spinner Graf Tank, the Death Shroud Cannon projecting a dense field of monofilament wire, leaving only unrecognizable gore in its wake. The area affected can be adjusted for maximum coverage or increased lethality. Finally for today, a few interesting engagements these guys took part in include. In 232 and 41, in the aftermath of a battle on Kulrak, in which the Eldar of Craftworld Mimira successfully fought off a demonic incursion, a great raiding party of the Dark Eldar Cabal of the Fiend Ascendant threatened the clutch of the Eldar Spirit Stones. It was greatly feared that the Cabal would retreat to Komara and debase the souls of Mimira's dead. With their numbers already considerably weakened from the previous battle, the Elder of Mimira had little choice but to command their spirit seers to unleash their ghost warriors in defense. The Wraith Constructs launched one of the most vengeful strikes in the Craftworld history, and many Cabalite warriors and their raiders were incinerated by Wraith Knight Plasma Blasts. In 631 and 41, the Farseers of Alaitok foresaw a vicious assault from an orc Wa on the maiden world of Valarian. With many of their rangers too far to be recalled in time, the Farseers reluctantly called upon their spirit seers to activate a force of ghost warriors. The Wraith constructs were duly brought to war and hurried into concealed positions across the planet. When the attack came, the spirit warriors of Alaitok made pinpoint attacks on the Greenskin leaders, quickly tearing the heart out of the Wa and driving the orcs away from the world. In 899 M41, a great Wardbearer battleship stormed out of the Eye of Terror and set a path towards the Craftworld Ill Cave. In response, the Eldar released their ghost warriors aboard the monstrous vessel. Battle raged for weeks in the cavernous holds, and the ghost warriors endured ferocious firepower from dozens of demon engines. Eventually, the tide of battle turned, when in one of the ship's landing bays, three Ilkaif Wraith Knights came out to engage a Chaos Feral Titan. They finally blasted away to the void of space, and then began the methodical slaughter of the remaining Chaos forces a rare instance where you cheer for the Eldar against the Wordbearers. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the mighty Eldar Wraith Knights for today. I don't know about you, but this one definitely made me think about a grimdark version of Pacific Rim. Also, these are not to be confused with actual Eldar Titans, 
which are not one and the same with the Wraith Knight. Hopefully I can make a video about them as well sometime in the future. What about you though? Are you fans of the Wraith Knight? Did you ever use any or fought against them in the actual game? Do share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below. If you enjoyed the episode or found it informative, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome healthy day. Isha's blessings be upon you.